Hey, CMB family, back for another Mucho's Mad Memory for you. We've got a good one. We were talking about it. This one is how Mucho got his start in the radio business as an online personality, or on-air personality, rather. Uh, really, really cool story. Very interesting. Just kind of let you guys know that uh, if you put it out there and take risks and take chances, you know, good things can happen. So, all right, Mucho, hit us with it, man. What's the mad memory of how you well, got uh, on air? Well, on mainstream radio, because I've been doing okay, radio since mainstream. Yeah, that's what I meant. Big, 15 big years break, old. I was an intern serving coffee. I did pirate radio stations. But I was 18 years old. I uh, decided to leave the East Coast and come to the University of Arizona, Bear Down Wildcats. And um, I... Uh, did media arts because I always wanted to be in radio. I had already done it since I was 15. Right. Uh, I saw right away that, uh, you know, being a radio DJ and going to college wasn't a good mix because they weren't really showing me much. And camp radio was just horrible. Right. You know? So there I am. Uh, I don't know where my college career is going. I, I want to be a radio DJ, but don't know how to break into the mainstream industry. And uh, I was getting kind of depressed, and I was taking advice from my parents to switch my major to law or political science. Something boring. Yeah. So I was really considering it. So uh, my boys and I decided to go out uh, for a night of drinking and just to forget always, my troubles. That always brings some good, fresh ideas. Yeah. So, my, you know, my, my good friend said, hey, you know, forget it tonight. We'll go out. We'll, we'll forget about all that stuff. I said, great. Uh, so that afternoon after class, I went to uh, the subway on Grant and Alvernon. This is before it was, got all methy on Grant and Alvernon. <laughs> a little, little pre-meth. It was more just crack then, not so much meth. You know, good old crack. So I stopped at that subway, and uh, I was getting a sandwich, and the guy who was making the sandwich is like, hey, guys, uh, you guys, what are you guys doing tonight? I'm like, well, that's a funny question for the guy making my sandwich asking. And he's like, I'm like, Nothing. He's all like, hey, I'm going to be freestyling at Spike's uh, nightclub tonight in downtown. And he gave me a flyer. Oh, wow. And I'm like, this guy making my Subway sandwich. So I'm going to go see him in a freestyle battle. So I just crumpled the, the flyer up and I put it in my old pair of jeans. And uh, I went to my apartment and, uh, and took a nap. I woke up. My friend's like, hey, get ready. We're going to go out. And uh, I remember I wanted to look nice that day. So I got uh, my new pair of slacks. A uh, shirt, a nice shirt, combed my hair, and my boy picked me up. And we were your hair. That's a good touch. Yeah. That was a good touch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, we went out. He had a nice uh, Pontiac Grand Am back then. It was oh a yeah, car. oh yeah. Uh, so I'm like, all right, man, what are we doing? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> so there we are, two college guys. Don't know what to do. So we go get some uh, liquor and get liquored up, and then we're like, then what? So uh, we were just out of ideas and i re this is the weird part man i reached into my pocket and pulled out that damn crumpled up flyer that guy gave me i hadn't been thinking about it but just but it was in, in my new pocket. slacks really so i went from the jeans to the slacks i i to this day i can't explain this huh wow. but it was there and i told the guy and i told my friend like huh you want to go check this crap out for shits and giggles right and he was like yeah so we went there, and I, the whole way there, I'm just still bitching and complaining that I have to change my major. That I want to be a radio DJ, but I can't. And all the radio DJs in Tucson, Arizona, Phoenix, they suck. I come from the East Coast. Angie Martinez, Funkplex, Howard Stern, and these guys were boring here. Right. But I can't get a shot. So we go to the club. I get even more intoxicated. I'm listening to these freestyle rappers that were just horrible, and I just put my hoodie my sweater hoodie on and i just wanted to go into depressed mode in walks in uh people with cameras and and lights and people were like oh my god who is it and back then in tucson there was a guy named r dub he was the man in I the remember, radio business I remember, yeah. he's now the syndicated radio host of successful slow jams um so he back then he had a tv show on local Tucson TV. And oh, he'd wow. go around Tucson filming uh, different spots. And apparently he was there for that club that night. And and people were just like, you're the best. You're the best. And I'm very depressed sitting in the back of the club looking at him like. <laughs> Poured yourself a big tall glass of Haterade. Yeah. So like, very oh, salty. I, I see I where it's coming from. And he was walking by a few feet away from me. And I just said, hey, our dub. 
And he stopped and he looked over in my direction and I said, you suck. I'm better than you. And then I just saw him walk over with almost seven feet giant security guard. <laughs> At this point, I said to myself, I'm probably going to get beat up. Because back then it wasn't a big a deal. You just no. you, you but get I punched said, real easy for talking shit. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. And I said, well, I, I, I spoke it. And he came up to me and he, and he said, what did you say? And I said, well, this is not the time for me to back off. I said, you suck. I'm better than you. And I was waiting for my beating because I was going to take it like a man. <laughs> and he reached inside his coat pocket and he gave me a business card. Wow. Okay. He gave me a business card. And he's like, if you're any good, call me. Next day I called him, excited. And he said, well, uh, Friday, it was a Monday, I called him. And uh, he was like, it's Friday, uh, meet, meet me at the radio station. I heart radio stations on Friday at 10 o'clock at night. And I, I thought it was a little weird, 10 o'clock at night. Like, That's well, it's when, when it's going with well, Friday, Friday night uh, jams, right? You know, I was like, I, I'm like, okay, whatever. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I, the whole week I was nervous but excited. I was celebrating with my peoples, and I just, I, I didn't know what to think of this. So, finally, Friday night showed up. I showed up to the door. It was closed. Obviously, the iHeart building was closed, and I was just knocking on the door. Nobody was there. I called him, and eventually, after keeping me waiting outside for like half an hour, he comes to the door with some guy, his assistant manager, Puerto Rico, and they're like, come in. I'm like, hey, guys. And they're like, hey, shut up. Just follow us. I'm like, uh-oh. Am I going to get a beat down? <laughs> what I was supposed to get at the club? What's going on? And the club was too, was too, <laughs> many, too many witnesses <laughs> too many going witnesses, on. Right? So I had to, hey, you, he, he talked you into coming to somewhere <laughs> private where you get your beat down. So they take me into this small little like broom closet type deal. And it has a computer, a soundboard, and a two-way glass. Or they can see me, but I can't see them. So like. Like an interrogation room almost, yeah. right? So, and they're like, okay, this is the deal. You got a big mouth on you. It could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing in this business. You talk a lot. So what we're going to do is you're going to hear us over the monitors and we're going to say go and you are going to put on a radio show. And we're going to tell you when to stop. And I said, what do you mean put on a radio show? You got a computer with music. You got a soundboard. All right, Mr. Big Shot, you're better than it's me. It's a DJ, right? Let's do it. I, I was nervous. I didn't know what to say, what to do. I saw them giggling as they were leaving. So I automatically knew that they were setting me up for a failure. Right, right. And before they closed the door, he looked over at me and said, I'm going to be very serious when I tell you this. If you do a good job, I will hire you on the spot. Give you your own show. If well, no pressure though, no, no pressure. yeah, right. And if you're horrible, that's a hell of an interview, a hell of a way to get an interview, right? That's and, and, and he said, if you're horrible, then you should check, you should uh, seriously think about a career change. This ain't for you, right? So they closed the door, and I was just sitting there and remembering all those days of serving coffee to the big DJs in New York City, the pirate radio stations. The cranking of the old radio carts you kids know nothing about, the vinyls. And I said, this is it. My so whole career. You get one shot. This is your eight right mile, here. This is your eight-mile moment. Yep. So you're like Eminem, like this is it. And he said, go. And I don't know what possessed me, but I knew what levers to push. I knew the soundboard. I knew the computer. I knew what to say. I even sold in, in the business, when you sell, that means that you are talking about sponsors and the ones that are putting money in your pocket. Right. And they let me go for 20 minutes straight nonstop. And then they said stop. And they made me sit in that stinking room for another half hour without anybody talking to me or coming in to see me. And then... So you didn't know if you bombed or did great? I didn't nothing. know at that moment. So. so after half an hour, I just see Puerto Rico come in the door. And he's like, follow me. And he leads me to the exit. And I was like, that. this is where your career is headed, right? Yeah, here. I guess that was it. I mean, <laughs> Dub, Dub couldn't even look me in the eye and say, you suck, kid. You can't do this. And then he opened the exit door and Puerto Rico looked at me and he's like, Dub said you start on Monday. Wow. You were the new night guy. And that was the beginning of my mainstream career. <laughs> Man, that's a heck of a story. 
So you just threw it out there. It just goes to show you, if you throw it out there and you just, you know, say, hey, look, I'm going to freaking be cocky and confident. And I'm just going to go right to somebody that, that's ahead of me. And I'm just going to tell them, hey, I'm as good or better than you are. Give me a shot. I think uh, my whole life as a kid, I always was very determined. If I had a goal or a dream, nothing was going to stop me from getting it. Right. Now, in my teenage years, in my early 20s, I had that and cockiness, which is good. Well, I can tell you something. But later down the road, it turns bad. Yeah, well, (laughs) it's it's definitely a double-edged sword. There's no doubt about that. You know, and double-edged swords can, you know... Everybody knows that that adage of double edged swords, but that just means that it can you it, you can use it to cut things, or it can cut you, right? So yeah, uh, you just got to use it to cut things instead of cutting you. But I can tell you, determination and, and balls, and that's what I call it. You know, it's, it's balls and ladies. You have balls too, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, determination and balls will will take you pretty far. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, that's the two things that most people that even might, might be extremely talented and and uh, have opportunities. They don't bring their their determination and their balls with them. Well, that that helped flat. me. That helped me in the in the early stages of my well, career. Well, clearly you had talent too. So you yeah, know, you were, well, you, you had you had the balls, determination, and then you backed it up with your talent and then presto. But you know, it led me to some wrong decision makings for other stories, other times. And hey, that's going to be another that includes our dub. mad memory. But that's the <laughs> how he got his start or how he got his big break yeah. in the radio business and yeah. got on mainstream radio. So that's a pretty awesome story. Uh, if you've enjoyed this Mucho Mad Memory, uh, you can catch a lot more of Mucho. Uh, maybe I'll have to turn into his co-host, actually. We'll see. Uh, on the show, Corey Means Business. Check it out on YouTube. It's also a podcast. You can Anywhere podcasts are found or on YouTube, simply type in Corey Means Business, and you'll find the channel. So I uh, really appreciate the support, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Change, 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 change.